We've recently learned that there's not a whole lot of difference between supercharging Tesla batteries in a Tesla EV or slow charging them at home. Now, the media are claiming that there's no difference at all. Is this actually true? Well, not quite. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Sam Evans and you're watching The Electric Viking. For quite a while now, I've followed hundreds and hundreds of posts made on a Tesla Facebook group, which is the high mileage Tesla group. And people will post their mileage data on there and then they'll say whether or not they fast charged the car or what they did basically over the course of that period of time and how much it cost them to maintain the car. Now, there's many, many owners on there who have had the same battery pack for well over 200,000 miles. It's very, very common. Many of them have supercharged. Many of them haven't supercharged regularly. Is there a fundamental difference between them? Well, according to Tesla research studies that have recently coming out, it says this. The results show no statistically significant difference in range degradation between Teslas that fast charge more than 90% of the time and those that fast charge less than 10% of the time. Now, that was from a recurrent study. Is this actually true from my anecdotal observations? No, it's not. But anyhow, the recurrent team suggested that the results of the study could be applied to other Tesla models and to other electric vehicles of other manufacturers. That is categorically false though. I mean, what about a Nissan Leaf? Yeah, no, I don't think so. It really does depend largely on your BMS, your battery management software. If your battery management software is really good, well, yeah, good chance your battery degradation will be lower. But if it's not, then yeah, no, it's not. This, this is completely false. So I think Recurrent should probably retract these statements because they could be opening themselves up to a lot of lawsuits. There's a very high statistical probability that a lot of people are going to say, hang on, Recurrent told us that if we fast charge our battery more than 90% of the time, it would make no difference and our batteries would last as long as Tesla batteries. Yeah, no, I don't think that's correct. Now, it could be, possibly, anecdotally, I don't think it is. But until we see large scale studies for recurrent to make these claims, it's pure speculation. We do not know. Why do I say that? Because the batteries in Tesla's vehicles are different. Why are they different? Well, one, the battery chemistry is often different. Depends on the manufacturer, whether that be Panasonic, LG Chem, CATL, BYD, etc. But the other thing that's fundamentally different here is Tesla's BMS or battery management software, which is obviously proprietary. And that will definitely affect the battery longevity as well. While the data may apply to other Tesla models, it will differ for other brands of EVs. However, it can be concluded that vehicles from companies that place particular emphasis on providing reliable temperature, voltage and battery management systems will possibly get a similar result. But here's the thing. A lot of EVs, even expensive ones, most certainly won't. I mean, Here's something worth considering. Even Mercedes-Benz EV, some of them that cost more than $100,000, don't have a heat pump. Now, if your car doesn't have a heat pump, this could potentially affect its actual performance. There's other things to consider. What about if you have, say, an EV and you're driving it in a very, very hot temperature all the time? Let's say you live in Texas, Southern California and you're always driving in hot temperatures or storing the car in hot temperatures, will your battery still last as long? Of course not. Now, if you have your car in a hot temperatures all the time, plus you fast charge all the time, will your battery still last as long? Well, I mean, I can't prove that it won't, but I, I can pretty confidently say it's likely based on the information that I've read, I'm talking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of use cases, that it won't last as long. Lithium iron phosphate batteries generally do better in hot temperatures. Lithium ternary batteries or NMC, NCA chemistry type batteries generally do better in the cold. Now that will change in the future. Now that CHL have revealed their new cold weather lithium iron phosphate batteries, that will be different once those batteries are being used by Tesla, which they most certainly will be. However, I still don't buy this story from recurrent. I think they need to actually assess 
more owners of the cars, of Teslas. Now, to be fair, they did apparently actually look at 12,500 Tesla vehicles in the United States, including 6,300 Model 3s and 4,400 Model Ys. However, the key here is you're relying upon the owners to tell you the complete truth. This is like any study. There's millions of studies in medical journals which hold dubious credibility because it's simply data that we don't know if it's true. It's basically a survey. Is it accurate? I don't know. Personally, I believe what Tesla are telling us. That is, if you supercharge your battery, as in run a whole lot of power and current into that battery all at once, at a fast speed, it won't last as long as a battery that is trickle charged. Now that has played out for many, many years. Is it true that Tesla has improved their battery's performance under fast charging situations? Absolutely. Does it mean though that your battery is still gonna last just as long if you supercharge it constantly? Not from the anecdotal reports that I have read, and I'm talking hundreds of them. Now, that's purely what I've seen. What do you think? Let me know in the comments what your experience was. Do you agree with this recurrent claims? Do you think that all EVs should then last just as long if you fast charge them or you slow charge them? I don't agree with that, but let me know what you think in the comments. And thank you for watching.